First off, I don't do my own stunts. Overloading shot, take one. Making these videos can be fun, as long as you don't take it too seriously. This is my studio. Yep, just a tabletop. Often, I don't even bother to remove the clutter. That's because the first rule is, if the camera doesn't see it, it doesn't exist. This is my camera. The Panasonic HC V201, circa 2012. Full HD and 10 megapixels. Whoa. All right, all right. Hey, it's compact and it gets the job done. Most important is that it has an amazing optical zoom that actually beats my modern camera. Today, we're going to be looking in part at how I made the Red Rock in the Sand video. Every video must have an intro slide that is eye-catching plus looks good as a thumbnail. For this one, I chose a hunk of iron ore in the sand on a beach with an ore boat sailing by. Of course, my tabletop studio is a long way from the lakes, so I had to improvise. First, I got a photo of the Myron C. Taylor off the shore of Greenbush, Michigan in 1982. I had to use a little computer magic to remove the pink fade. Then I cropped the image to make it more vertical and leave room for wording. Next, I printed a high-res image of the photo on some cardstock. Now I had the background, and I needed a beach. For the camera, it had to be slightly elevated and sloped. Cardboard and a hunk of wood. The camera will never know. I did, however, feel like I needed some actual Lake Huron sand just for a taste of realism. Then I remembered that my wife likes to collect sand with our kids at every beach that we visit. And behold, sand from Tawas Point. Of course, to spoof the scale, I had to remove all of these shells and stones and stuff. Next, I needed a piece of iron ore that was the right size. Every Great Lakes maritime historian is required by intergalactic law to possess at least one baby food jar with iron ore in it. Here's mine, and here's the exact hunk of ore for the shot. And here's the end result, a pleasant Lake Huron beach scene that'll be on the screen for about six seconds. Now for the picking up the stone on the beach reenactment. First, I'll need a bigger hunk of iron ore. Thus, I break out my iced tea jar full of iron ore, which is also in compliance with the intergalactic law. Ah, yes. Let's see here. There we go. The perfect chunk of ore. Now for the beach to walk upon. That one is fairly easy. First, I walk out through my front gate and cross the street. Then up the drive. Along the pathway. Around the fence into the public lot. And we have the expanse of Chesapeake Bay in front of us. Plus the sliver of beach that the kids love to play on at low tide. There's just one problem. 
Chesapeake Bay sand is more greenish than lake sand. A little computer magic once again, and... That's more like it. Sometimes I need to make tools on the fly. Here's an example. When I need a chart for a backdrop, I need something to hold it up. So I broke out the glue and some scrap balsa wood. Presto! A stand. What the camera doesn't see, doesn't exist. By the way, that cargo hold that was in the beginning of the video, it's a shoebox. Hey, I got new sneakers and I figured I'd use it. This is my new book. Look for it at www.authorwest.com. It's really good, if I do say so myself.